Okay. Hi, I'm Ishai. Um, this is me. I'm a software developer and a uh, Flex committer since 2016. Uh, currently working with Harbs is probably going to join us uh, quite soon on migrating an app from uh, uh, Legacy Flex to Flex.js or Classic Flex to Flex.js. Um, I can see a few faces that I don't know, so I'd, I'd like to know uh, how many people here uh, do not know anything about Apache Flex or about Flex in general? Okay. Um, okay. Great. So um, let's talk a little bit about classic Flex. Flex, uh, this actually has been, I was expecting people to mostly know about it, so I'll give a short introduction. Um, it's uh, originally an Adobe or Macromedia project. Um, it was uh, cl closely tied to Flash, but it had all sorts of uh, nice features like uh, MXML, which allows you to do uh, declarative programming. Um, and ActionSip 3 is a language which was developed for Flash, uh, which uh, is ECMA, meaning it's the same family as JavaScript. That means it is a scripting language. But it's got all sorts of neat features, such as uh, strong types, uh, packages, um, and it's inspired by Java in a, in a, in a pretty strong way. Um, classic Flex SDK featured pretty good IDEs, which Adobe supported, um, and had lots of features. Um, some of the problems were that it had a pretty big uh, download size, and it was uh, it could get slow. It could be uh, pretty difficult to optimize. Um, Flex.js uh, tries to build on the good things in uh, classic Flex, um, meaning it's still, it's still got uh, MXML. We'll see pretty uh, soon what that means exactly. Um, it's still got ActionScript 3 as, as the main programming language. Uh, it's still got pretty good IDs, which are being developed. Josh is going to have a talk on uh, VS Code uh, Realm 10, right? Um, and he's doing a great job in uh, um, actually allowing us to use Flex.js in, uh, in more tools. Uh, so basically, the big news is that it's no longer Flash dependent. Um, it hasn't got that many features because we were only um, an open source community. We're not Adobe. Who has invested uh, tens, you know, years of uh, of man work uh, times whatever, um, and it, it is easier to optimize. We've tried to um, address a lot of the issues that we saw in Classic Flex and avoid them. Um, so le let me try and give you just a feel for how uh, an application looks like. Most of this uh, session will be um, a sort of a hands-on. So we'll be switching to my IDE most of the time. Uh, this is my IDE. It's a Flash Builder, which is based off Eclipse. As I said, there are a lot of choices. Well, there are some choices for using uh, different IDEs. This is the one I've got used to. Um, so let, let us see what a uh, Flex.js application actually looks like. So I've created a demo. Ah, oh, that's interesting. It's not really showing. Huh. Do you know how to fix that? I mean, the, the uh, maybe we need. Maybe we need to minimize it. Presentation mode. Exit. Exit. Where's exit? No. Let's just turn it off for a minute. Okay. Um, so what you see here is actually the most probably the simplest uh, uh, application written in uh, MXML. Um, so I don't know. Uh, does, I hope this makes sense. This is uh, 
MXML, as you can see, is, is an XML-based uh, language. It uh, has an initial view. It's got a simple CSS values input. We can ignore that for now. Um, it's uh, not really important right now to understand it, but it's, it's got an initial view and it's got uh, a main view. So let's drill down into the main view and see what a view actually looks like. Um, actually, you know what? Let's run it and see what it looks like. I'm gonna just run it. Oops. Okay, this is uh, what our application uh, looks like. Pretty useless, but um, let's see if we can understand from the MXML what, what we're actually seeing. Let's look at the code. Um, so you can see a, uh, a label, and you can see right here as well. Is this clear? Can you, can you all see uh, what I'm marking? Yeah. Um, you can see an H container, which is a horizontally uh, laid out container with two buttons, there they are, uh, and another uh, sort of a label downstairs. Um, so I think it's pretty descriptive, the, uh, the code. It's pretty easy to understand. Um, and let's look at some of the cool features about MXML. Um, so as you can see, I've got a state, a current state. The current state is verbose. Um, what does that mean, actually? In MXML, you can actually uh, choose um, the attributes for your XML elements according to states. So right now, we're seeing the verbose state. Um, but if you go to the terse state, can you see the uh, dot separator here? That means I'm now uh, using the terse state, which uh, will just show uh, stuff instead of uh, a more verbose message. So let's see if, how that works. So button one changes state. Let's click button one. And you see that the, we're now in terse mode. So I think that's also a nice sort of feature uh, where you can create pretty big changes with a descriptive language, which is not, uh, not too complicated. Um, so this is uh, what MXML basically looks like. It works for those of you who know uh, classic flex, it works very well. Um, and what else was I going to talk about during about XML? Right, so we've got Action Script 3, which is a pretty good uh, um, scripting language. No CSS here for layout. We, we're just using H container. We don't need to worry about block or whatever. Um, we're just using something that sort of makes sense. Um, I, I never got the hang of uh, CSS layout uh, in a satisfactory way. And this is so much easier for me. And there's uh, many more options like tile layout, um, you name it. I mean, you can just build a layout, plug it in, and use it. Um, now, another cool feature in MXML is data binding. Um, let me show you how that works. So we've got a uh, label um, right here. Right now it's just saying label, not very interesting. Um, but let's, see, let's say that we wanted to make it show whatever is written on uh, this label. Right. So I would create an ID, call it <coughs> down label. and have the text bound to it. 
Um, let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see that now we have the same um, text for both the bottom and the upper label. That was also pretty easy to achieve using, um, using binding. This is the, the binding uh, sort of mark in the markup language. Um, now let's see how this gets a little bit more interesting. So um, we want to add a behavior to, to label and use data binding. Um, so what I'm going to do now is add behavior to the label. And this is one of the nice things about Flex.js. It, it lets you plug in all sorts of behaviors with beads. We'll talk about it a little bit more later. So I'm going to add a bead, which is called um, click tracker. Give it an ID. ID. Um, and now the text will show Okay, suddenly this is re, uh, interacting with the, the mouse. Um, and how did, I, how did I do this? I mean, this is a, sort of a magical thing. Um, let me just see that I'm sort of in the flow of the presentation because it's, uh, don't want to miss too much. Um, so what have we seen so far? We saw how to build an app. We saw data binding. We saw states. Um, we haven't seen a custom component yet, so let's do that as well. One of the nice things that I didn't mention about MXML is unlike HTML where you have a, a, a fixed set of uh, tags uh, that you can uh, use, you can actually create tags. So um, let's uh, see that by uh, using a different component. This is pretty verbose. I've got a label and I've got beads inside it. I've got data binding going on. I don't want to repeat this uh, mark, markup thing uh, for uh, you know, end times. So I'd like to sort of encapsulate all this in one tag. Um, so that's what I did with a uh, component that I wrote. Right? So I'm going to add the component, run it. And you see my component is acting pretty much the same. It's got a different font size, it's got a different message, but it's got uh, the same uh, functionality. Now, how did I do this? Um, so my comp, wrong place. My comp is under components. I simply have a package called the components. I declare another MXML class and there you go, you've got the, the functionality, um, different message a little bit, whatever. Um, so this is how you create tags. It's a powerful concept, uh, and it makes uh, your code much more readable, uh, readable, sorry. Um, that's my demo. Um, now, we've been using the IDE to build this. Um, but it looks nice. Um, this is using Flash. You can see here the context menu. It's got Adobe Flash Player. Now, we all probably know Flash is not a very uh, popular thing these, thing these days. Um, it has a lot of advantages, as far as I'm concerned. It's uh, pixel perfect across browsers. Um, some other points that I put, uh, the build is very quick. It's got incremental building. 
Um, developers have pretty good tools for it. Um, and for distributed uh, development, it's got some handy uh, features such as a runtime verifor verifier. So that means that if you've got a third party library, for instance, uh, which is uh, supposed to implement a certain interface. Uh, you can load the uh, library at, uh, at runtime, and it will fail because the interface is uh, incorrect, for instance. That's pretty difficult to achieve in uh, JavaScript, if, if at all possible. Um, so Flash is pretty neat. Uh, it also uh, translates to uh, Adobe Air, which is uh, still widely used in uh, mobile and several desktop applications. One of, them, uh, one of the users is sitting right here. Um, and, um, but we know, it, we know what's going on with Flash. Uh, so let's see if we can just use the source that we used for Flash and build it for JS. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm going to open up uh, Chrome, which is already set up. And we've got the uh, so, same, same application, as far as I can tell. It's a little bit different, because it's selectable here. So it's not a perfect one-to-one uh, -one, um, visual uh, translation. Um, but the nice thing is I'm now free of the context menu for Flash. So clients are not complaining, how come this is a Flash application? Um, and I can also then use uh, Google DevTools. I've got inspection, I've got sources, I've got breakpoints, whatever. Um, so this is a legitimate uh, HTML application that I just built using MXML. Um, and that's the whole idea behind FlexJS, hence JS. Um, any questions so far? Um, does anybody not know about uh, development tools in, uh, of Chrome, how they were used, uh, et cetera? We're all from an HTML background, right? Okay. Um, so how did that actually happen? Um, well, in Flash, it's like the old Flex applications. You just uh, let Flash Builder compile. Um, FlexJS yes, is a set of libraries that it can uh, recognize. Uh, in JavaScript, I was using Ant. Um, Chris is going to talk later about how to do, how to probably have a better workflow using Maven. Um, and the application code is uh, transpiled from AS3 to JavaScript using Falcon JX. This is where the magic happens. Uh, I'm not going to go into that, but we have a, a special compiler uh, for translating ActionScript into JavaScript. There, as you recall, uh, both ActionScript and JavaScript are ECMAScripts, so there's a lot of similarities. They translate pretty well. Um, it's just a lot of work to, to actually do it, but that's what we're doing. Um, now, uh, yeah, in the framework code, uh, we already did that. We are, ha have a set of sources uh, set up for us uh, from the framework itself. So that's how it actually happens. Um, now let's talk a little bit about uh, adding more behavior. Well, we've already added click tracker. Um, so these are called beads. Uh, this is a new concept in uh, Flex. Well, that was introduced by FlexJS. Um, let's go ahead and talk about what, uh, what it actually means. What, what are these beads? Um, so, uh, the, the beads, uh, most of you guys are probably English speakers. For me, it was a new word. I didn't even know what beads were before I uh, looked at uh, FlexJS. Um, but um, how would you describe a bead? A bead is a sort of a small object on a strand, which is sort of a, um, right, a sort of a wire or a coil, or I don't know what. Um, anyway, uh, so think about UI components as strands. Um, what is actually UI component? It's a set of behaviors. Um, 
how do you load this strand with behaviors? You can uh, add a bead. A bead is just uh, some behavior you think is important in your UI component, such as data binding, such as a tooltip, such as uh, having a layout. Um, the nice thing about beads is you don't have to bake them into the component. You can add them, you can remove them. Uh, why is that important? Um, so, um, remember the first slide I said, well, Flex was really difficult to optimize and it had a big download size. Uh, this is a, sort of a boost to optimization. You can actually just decide, look, we don't really need a tooltip on everything. We don't really want to uh, listen to mouse events on a mobile application. We don't really want to do all sorts of things that we don't want to do on our, in our application. So just let us control what sort of code goes, goes into the application. Um, so let's see how that actually uh, happens. Um, as you recall, uh, I added a click tracker to label. Um, so after compiling it, I can search for click tracker, and there it is. I can see the source. This is a transpiled core um, code from uh, from uh, action scripts. Okay, so this is the. Oops, sorry. This is click tracker and action scripts. Ignore the errors. I don't know where they're coming from, or the warnings actually. Um, but uh, it's pretty, pretty compact. Um, this is what it's actually doing in JavaScript, which is a little bit, you know, more verbose. Um, but it's there. We download. We just downloaded um, a file. Um, of course, this can be minified with FlexJS, um, but some, 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 some ASCII, some text, sorry, is gonna, is gonna be there. Uh, now let's just see, suppose we don't want this such uh, silly tracker thing, we don't want to know how many times we've clicked. Um, let's just remove the bead from the demo. Um, so I'll just comment it out. And rebuild. Oops, you're right about that. Okay, so if I refresh, so my application is now a little bit more boring. There's no click tracker. But the good thing is that if I look for click tracker, oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. Let's, uh, I think this is a Google problem. Yeah. Uh, that was my comp? Yeah, that one had to use a trick Okay. <laughs> anyway, we're going to clear the browser just in case. Uh, no, that's click tracker. If you need to comment out my comp. I need to comment. Oh, you're correct. Yes. You're correct. Josh was helping me with this bead, so <laughs> thank you, Josh. Um, Let's get out of my comp. Ah, oh, yeah, Mike, we can just comment it out. It's easier to blame Google, but it's my fault. <laughs> um, right. Let's see if this works. Aha. Where's click tracker gone? Okay. Does everybody get it? Does anyone not get it? Okay. So this is the uh, bead mechanism and why. Okay. So the, I just said uh, it's cool because uh, there's uh, a low, um, not a lot of download size. That's one thing. Um, what, but there, that's not the only thing. Um, 
we believe that um, it, it, it also uh, encourages better programming. Um, we don't particularly like all these complex hierarchy trees saying uh, this object is a car, but it also has a wheel, but it also whatever, so what class is it? Um, I don't know, there's a classic uh, anti-patterns that can be done using too much inheritance. Um, and composition is generally uh, considered to be a better idea. So this is a form of composition. We're just adding things to an existing uh, class. We're not uh, uh, baking everything in. Um, uh, we can override behavior. Uh, let's see actually how this is done. So let's have a closer look at, uh, at our view again. What are we seeing actually? If you recall, we have an initial view. And this initial view has all sorts of um, components, a label, blah, 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 each container. Um, how come it's laid out uh, vertically? Uh, the reason is that I added a CSS file. And I specified the uh, layout for the main view right here. And as you can see, I put vertical layout for this view. Now, I've got a bunch of layouts I can choose from. I don't have to use vertical layout. Um, let's use horizontal instead, see what it looks like. Um, let's build. Right. You can see that the layout is now horizontal. I did not touch the code or anything, and I just overrided uh, the behavior. Overrode, I don't know what you say. Um, so that's another cool thing about beads. You, you can use an existing component and choose uh, to add, remove, uh, override a behavior quite easily. Another way I could have done this, um, I, sorry, we're in the main view. Instead of what I just did, I could have described it here, right? So now I want to re-override, uh, if you can say, I want to override the overridden behavior. So I'm going to put it back to vertical. But I can do it here. Um, run it. And it's back where it was. Okay, so if you imagine um, some sort of a uh, third party component, um, you're not exactly sure you like it, you can add your own beads uh, and modify it pretty easily. Or you can just choose out of a set of beads that it provides you uh, and decide here what you're gonna use. So that's another nice thing about beads. Um, we've talked about download size. Um, okay, so what if I um, don't really like the way this looks? Obviously, this isn't the most beautiful application you'll ever see. Um, I want to use a completely different uh, component set that has uh, whatever, that has a nice styling. Um, so a lot of behaviors can be added with beads. You just have to do it in advance and you've got your own component set. Um, so for instance, I, we, we have just added to my component a bead. We could have added some more, uh, like uh, the border label that I just uh, commented out. All right. And uh, etc. I mean, uh, a good programmer will be able to come up with a much nicer theme than I did. Um, all you'll have to do is to choose uh, how to implement it in your app, how to incorporate it in your application. So, um, Right now, if, if, if you have a look, wait, let's see the effects of what I just added. 
Oh yeah, that's right. Some good, uh, good help from the uh, audience. See, now it's got a silly border. Um, so back to component sets. Uh, what are these component sets exactly? Uh, let's have a look. Oops. So component sets, as I said, uh, allow you to choose your own um, UI set. So what, 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 what would you choose and why? I mean, you, you might not really care about optimizations, about download size and things like that. You just want to develop something really fast. You don't want to add beads continually and remove them. You're bored. I mean, that's not part of your plan. Uh, and, uh, and a lot of other people think we need the bare bones version. That's what I'm using right now. Uh, that's what we're using actually in the application uh, that I'm actually mag migrating right now to Flex.js. Um, or you might even choose to uh, wrap in an existing J JavaScript library and use that as your uh, theme, as a um, set of functionalities and whatever. Uh, so we've already done that on several uh, libraries, including uh, MDL. Uh, Peter uh, is he sitting here. He's got a large part in that. Um, CreateJS, uh, there's probably more coming. Uh, how do I actually uh, use that in my application? Um, so uh, let's say that I wanted to, instead of, oops, let's go back to the main view. Instead of using JS, you can see that I'm using uh, prefix JS for uh, most of my components. That's because the namespace uh, says uh, JS is the basic uh, component set. Now, I'd like to actually use the express component set, which is uh, supposed to be faster for development. Um, so for instance, if I wanted to add a button, you can see it gives me a choice. You can use JS button, which I don't know how easy it is for you guys to see, um, but this has a, uh, 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 it's difficult to see like this, I'm sorry. Let's do the container. Okay, so a container has a JS container and it also has NS container. You choose what you're gonna use. Suppose I wanted to use the NS container. I've been using the JS container so far. Um, what just happened is that uh, another namespace was added. Um, oh, that's the JS, sorry, that's the CreateJS. So, there yeah, there was Express as well. That was, that's what I was planning to use. Container. Express, right? So different namespaces, NS container versus JS container, um, determine which, co which component from which component set I'm going to be using. It's pretty easy to ch pick and choose uh, according to your needs. Um, that's the idea. Uh, so you can mix and so who would want to actually use uh, CreateJS with ActionScript, you might ask? Well, I, I think what we are aiming at is to convince people that this is a much easier experience. If you can use JavaScript libraries using this sort of um, declarative languages, uh, whatever, the tool set that we're providing, um, then people will just uh, find it more productive. Um, so, if you want to contribute uh, or whatever, um, you can just take your favorite uh, JavaScript library, wrap it around in Flex.js, and hopefully uh, people find it productive. Um, that's about component sets. So, um, I'm, I'd like to also show you, we are a pretty uh, active team. We're always looking for more people. 
And um, I'd like to show you this. I hope this doesn't seem too daunting. Um, it's pretty easy to actually be a contributor. Um, and let's just say uh, you ran into an itch. I mean, you, you're using Flex.js. You're not completely satisfied. There's some need that you haven't been uh, provided with the, the solution for. Um, you want to create a bead that works for you. Um, for instance, you want borders around your labels for some reason. Not that it doesn't exist in Flex.js, but it could not. Um, so suppose you wanted to create a border label that everybody can actually enjoy. Well, um, right now, this is the border label. It's part of the uh, basic component set. I've just added a uh, bead to the basic component set. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually uh, work with Flex.js and change the framework. Um, so let's go back to our, sorry, to our application. And add this border label. Hello. Right, so now boring should have a label as well. Should. Uh, maybe not. Boring leads border label. Interesting. That wasn't what I was looking for. Okay, let's see if it works in the uh, Flash version. Might have done something. Well, it's showing, uh, but it's showing uh, in the components that I created. For some reason, it's not showing in the other components. Let's see if I can understand this. Ah, I think I understand why. Actually, I don't. Okay, but let's let's uh, let's focus. Uh, I guess I'll have to work that out. Let's focus on the component that I just created here. So as you can see, we've got a border label uh, added as a bead. This is part of the framework. All right, it's got the JS uh, prefix, meaning it's coming out of uh, Flex.js Basic. Um, now, I want to change this a little bit. So the nice thing is I've set up my environment so I can actually change things here and uh, see them uh, working as part of my application. So right now this is, this got uh, whatever, um, uh, by 99. Uh, this got a line style with a thickness of five. Let's change it to one, it looks a bit too much, this five thing. I'm going to clean and rebuild. And run again. Mm -hmm. There's a problem. Sorry? You just try to run basic instead of my application. Um, 
Uh, let me do this. I'm sorry. This is Flash Builder issues. Josh is going to show us how this might not be necessary pretty soon. <laughs> Let me build. Okay. Okay. So border length, border uh, thickness has uh, has changed. Um, I think you know, barring the uh, the glitch that I had for some reason restarting, etc., it's pretty easy to do. You can uh, set your breakpoints here. You can uh, see w what you're doing, um, and that's it. Uh, now the only thing you need to do is build it for JavaScript. Oops. Done. Oop. Uh huh. This should not be here. Ah, I, I haven't talked about uh, conditional com uh, compilation. So, how do uh, I'd like to just say, uh, say a quick thing about uh, what I'm doing here? Uh, this uh, sort of uh, directive, whatever you call it. Um, says to the uh, compiler, uh, only compile this when uh, you're uh, compiling for Flash. Uh, this, these, are, uh, de these depend on the Flash player, so they're not going to work in HTML. Um, so when you're uh, actually writing a framework component, you're going to have to do this because you're low level. You're going to have to decide how, are you how you're implementing your uh, border bead. Uh, are you just uh, changing the style? Are you actually writing, uh, um, drawing a rectangle using graphics? Uh, you can do both in ActionScript. You just have to tell the compiler uh, what to look for. So um, this is what I was probably doing wrong. I was importing um, graphics, which is a Flash object, into uh, the main, main application. Um, now this uh, should uh, work in JavaScript. Once I did that. going to build the application again. Okay, so uh, we've got the border around the uh, HTML component. Uh, do, I'll ask a silly question. Why do you think nothing changed on the HTML side? I mean, I changed uh, the, the, the uh, thickness of the line. I don't see it on the HTML side. So, <laughs> Chris? Well, you changed it in the SPF. Yeah, I changed it here. Uh, the JavaScript part is here. It just does three pixels solid red, so nothing happened, actually. Um, that's it. I mean, I don't have that much time left, or do I? Five more minutes. Perfect. So um, anyway, um, we really think this is a pretty easy process. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do. Um, so um, if you can do this, if you can add a bead, make a pull request, uh, run the test, of course, first, uh, then we'd be more than happy. And I can answer any questions now if uh, anybody's interested. That good, eh? Okay. Maybe you can show the, the, the guys that aren't familiar with FlexJS. Uh, how cool, for example, is the MDL thing? Sort of what's, uh, 
Oh yeah. Cause, yeah, yeah. That's that a good idea. Looks boring, but you can do really cool ones. Right. So um, if you recall, uh, we were uh, talking about uh, component sets. Uh, so my main view is using uh, the basic component set, but uh, I could also add a uh, MDL component, say a slider. Yeah, it's uh, because the layout will be a little bit involved, I think. I'm just going <laughs> to avoid that for now. Um, so let's put a slider with a width of 100 pixels or whatever. Ah, you're right. No, it's not going to work here. But let's uh, let's uh, let's show you a uh, example. Uh, this is an example application that uh, Peter here and Carlos, who is not here, uh, worked on for a long time. So this is the MDL uh, implementation done in FlexJS. Um, styling is pretty nice, not like mine. Um, you know, you can you can you can create nice things using FlexJS. So um, this isn't just some sort of a um, mad scientist project. Uh, I think this is almost ready for um, production uh, quality applications. Using it, Sorry? We're using, it, yeah. We're using it. Our production quality application is uh, coming up. And um, uh, this is probably uh, going to gonna get better. So uh, that's it for now, unless anybody has any more questions. All right, thank you.